I'm C. Faulkner. I'm nine, I'll be 91 years old next Saturday. And I served in the United States Marine Corps from 1941 to 1945. I was in the Marine Corps parachute troops and I knew Ira Hayes personally because he was slept in the top bunk and I slept in the bottom bunk in parachute school. And I slept in a foxhole with him many, many, many nights. I was on the island of Gabutu, Tanabogo, and fought on the Guadalcanal on Bloody Ridge for two nights. And during that time of two nights on Bloody Ridge on Guadalcanal, they, they estimated we killed almost 3,000 Japanese soldiers. They just kept coming in mass. And all you had to just do is just lay there and shoot them. It's called Edson's Ridge. On Morganville we were on. We got caught in an ambush and we fought all afternoon. I mean, really fought hard. We lost 37 men out of 43. They were either killed or wounded. And our Hayes and I were two of the lucky ones. We, we did nothing happen to us. I was on Iwo Jima 18 days before I got wounded. I got wounded on D plus 17, which was the 18th day. And when you're in action like that, you get real careless. And I was standing up, making a good shot for somebody. And the, and the mortar shell landed about 10 feet from where I was at. It blew my pants leg off. It filled my right leg and arm full and little tiny pieces of shrapnel. I, I had a, a piece about the size of a dime went in here and was stuck, was stuck in my knee and they operated and took that out and that's what i looked like when i landed on Iwo Jima. that's not me that's just a pain i didn't carry an m1 i carried a bar a browning automatic rifle and it weighed 20 pounds and there was no way that you could put a bayonet on it it didn't it didn't have a bayonet the bar you had 12 clips on your belt and each one of those clips weighed a pound, so that's 12 pounds you had. And you had one in the gun, and the gun weighed 19. You had two canteens of water. You had a 45 automatic, uh, had a 45 pistol, and you had your big knife. What was your greatest fear that you had to overcome on Iwo Jima? I guess getting shot in the, in the gut. I saw a lot of them with their balls hanging out, and they were hold, they were holding them in. That was my greatest fear. You soon you soon learn that you can't stand around and be afraid. You got to keep going. And the day that they announced that the war was over, that Japan surrendered, I was standing in the company street and the camp loudspeakers, they played music all the time. And they were playing Chattanooga Choo Choo. When they, and they broke in and, and announced that Japan had surrendered. And I just, I cried easy. I just stood there and cried. I couldn't imagine my good fortune. I knew I was going home. We got to San Francisco, and that morning while it was real cloudy and overhanging and, and foggy, and as we were passing under the Golden Gate Bridge, the sun broke through in that big golden bridge. I knew I was home. I knew I was, I was safe.